Silver's on the scene. 151 days missing. His name is Sebastian Rogers. Today is Friday, July 26th. Hope hope everyone's week has been great. And everyone's looking forward to a fantastic weekend. Let's start here with this recap of my recent looks and searches for Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers. This photo here, this flyer here, this is what it's all about, folks. 151 days he has been missing. Great news we heard of last night. Maria Gomez Perez out of Gainesville, Georgia, was found safe alive and well in another state due to the efforts of everyone keeping the awareness alive. So great news. So happy for her and her family and her community. Sebastian Rogers, 151 days. Folks, that's five months. Five months since he was reported missing by his mother, Katie Proudfoot. Take a look at this flyer. Screenshot it. Show it to people. Keep the awareness alive. Because what's the goal? The goal is simple. Bring him home. So here's what we're going to do today in this video. I'm going to try to keep it as quick and as short as possible. It is a recap of this past week. Last weekend and a few days before last weekend of me going around, um, starting in Horn Lake, Mississippi, which is where the RV, Chris Proudfoot RV is, searching there, abandoned home, um, other woods in the area, then making that drive over to Hendersonville, home of Sebastian, where he was last seen, going around his neighborhood, uh, places that are nearby and then making my way over to Texas Roadhouse and Mary's Magical Place. So what we're going to see in this video are slides like this. So you have my videos as I drove around, as I got out of the car, as I actually walked and looked. These overhead shots will give you a better understanding of the lay of the land. One of my main purposes here, there's so many of you, thank you for your support. Thank you for your support. There's so many of you who would love to come out based on your comments and help look and help search. And I know it's not physically, possibly, financially, possibly, where, possibly wherever you are. So that's okay. Because as you watch these videos, as you share these videos, you can see the areas. As we try to find Sebastian, we want to know the area and where he was and how it's set up and what's close to the RV and what's close to the home. And these just open up possibilities. The thing about logical thinking is and discussion and communication on any topic as it is discussed and if you're focused and, and listening and watching, you'll always come up with ideas. No theory is crazy. Whatever it takes to find Sebastian. Okay? So I want to take a moment to thank people. Right here. Thank you very much, Justin. Clutch them pearls. Wow. He has a phenomenal channel. I've been watching him, I don't know, five months, four months. I really got into the Sebastian case probably around four months ago, posting my first theory and then taking it from there. But I watch uh, Justin all the time. He's, uh, he's just what we talk about. He communicates. I remember when he went all the way over to North Carolina where there was a possible sighting. And he's just great. So, you know, if I had anyone out there promoting me like he did on a video, on a live several days ago, I would want it to be him. So... If 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 I hope he sees this, and if he doesn't, then somebody please get it to him, and uh, maybe I'll send him a message. But thank you, Justin. Clutch them pearls. Subscribe to him, because he know what's he knows what's going on. 
thank you for helping find Sebastian. Uh, to my subs um, and anyone watching these videos, whether you sub or not, thank you for your support. Every time it's clicked play to watch something, it opens up your mind to see something that maybe you weren't aware of. Um, for example, with me, as, we, as we'll see the cemetery, I had seen it from Long Hollow Pike, the main road that goes by his neighborhood and his, and his, and his high school. And, but I did not realize how close it was, and we'll discuss that as we get to that slide. So anyway, let me jump in this. I'm rambling on. Don't want to keep this uh, uh, too long, but I want, to re I want you to remember several things as we go through. Let me back up. Thank you for everyone. I hope you got the thank yous there. I, I'm, I'm so so pleased with the support. I can't, you, I can't say it enough, so thank you. But remember this, Sebastian Rogers missing 151 days as of today. That's too long, folks. Five months, where is he? Where is he? We have to find him, okay? And it's things we're doing like this, communication with live streams, um, all these things that people are doing, everything works. Keep the awareness alive. Okay, so here we go. Bring him home. Hashtag bring him home. That's the goal. That's the goal. That's the first goal. We can talk about the second goal next. On down the line, towards the end. So let's start here. This is Horn Lake, Mississippi. So to give you an overview uh, real quick, if you're not familiar. So Chris Proudfoot does work in Memphis as a construction worker, the tower crane guy, uh, the, the St. Jude Hospital. I guess a new addition there. That's about 20 miles from where this you're seeing here is. So right here, a little circle, that's his RV. It's the Yogi Bears uh, Jellystone Camp. You'll see Memphis, Tennessee. The address is Horn Lake, Mississippi. Uh, right next to Horn Lake is South Haven, Mississippi. And that's the top, they call it the top of Mississippi. It's the furthest north as you can go where you then cross over into Memphis. So Memphis is just down the road. He, uh, you know, it's a fifth wheel. He leaves there. He drives his uh, truck into work every day. Okay, so looking at this, what do you see? And we've seen some of this before. There's all types of woods behind him. Most of this, I believe, to be private property. Okay, you have his RV sitting here, which is sitting in the very front spot. I don't know if he requested that. I don't know if that was the only spot open. It's very weird because... You know, part of their story is they moved there to get away from people. Well, if you th if that was the case, wouldn't you come way back here? You know, if you're way back here, see my little cursor here? If you're way back here, you know, then the drive-by doesn't work. They're the even coming and doing the cul-de-sac that I've done several times. I don't see you. You're way back here. I can't get to you. But you're right here. Very front, front spot. I find it very odd, and I don't know why. But we'll talk more about it as we see different spots. So here's the RV spot. Directly across the street at an angle, you see the RV and boom. This is the abandoned house that I went in. Now that thing is creepy. The whole area there, the driveway, the yard, the, the grass grown up, it, the whole thing is creepy. And I will be back. I absolutely did maybe 5%. I, I give it less than 5% of what needs to be because it was creepy and I was alone. There are plans to go back with people, and that will happen. As you can see here, we'll, we'll, we'll zoom in it, zoom in on this more on the next couple of slides, but I wanted to bring up this area too. These homes have been here double-digit years, 10 years or plus, but they have built some new ones. If you drive through there today, you will see that drywall is probably going up now. Several weeks ago, it wasn't. So at the time of his disappearance, Sebastian's disappearance back in February, 151 days ago were slabs porn because that's been a theory that Chris maybe had a found some way to bury him and then concrete poured over him. At this point, I will stop. All of this is alleged. It's allegedly in my opinion. Okay. As other YouTube channels say, do your own research, that research, you know, whatever it brings you, whatever you find right here. Silver's on the scene at yahoo.com. There were a lot of comments. You couldn't get in touch with me. Well, you can now. Silver's on the scene at yahoo.com. So feel free to email me any tips, leads, any theories, whatever. I read them all because, like I said, nothing is out there. 
Nothing is too crazy, too insane. The psychic readings, the tarot cards, all of that. Okay, because as I said before, I'll circle back around. Uh, in my experience, different jobs and in life and my career, discussion of any topic brings about new ideas and it leads to answers. Then you have here this circle around Sebastian Rogers missing 151 days. This is the nail road to where uh, a month or so ago I searched way over here. I just walked this whole place this time. I went back into these woods. Creepy back there is kind of like, it's almost like you go back about a football field and you, you can't hear anything. You're just surrounded. The, you'll see in the video. Take a look at that video. Same thing with over here. Just a lot of possibility. I did the same across the street. Looks like they're maybe building some things right here. So Highway 51 is where the RV park sits on. There's a little road here. Um, maybe it's address. I'm not really sure from that point. But uh, Highway 51, 51 is my favorite number. It gave me chills the first time I walked it. So, And then at the corner of Nail Road here, you have a little uh, auto zone or advanced auto parts. And then this road is very dark at night. So just looking near the RV, you're, you're talking about this abandoned house will be searched again, this area. And don't know what much we can do here if the homes are already up. It's just a possibility. And then these woods. So, okay, so let's move on to the, to the next slide. I don't know what happened here. Let's go next. Okay. All right, now I've zoomed in just a little bit more. We talked about the possibility up here. Um, you can see this whenever this Google shot was taken. Those homes are up now, but three weeks, a month ago, they had no drywall. So going back four months from that point when Sebastian went missing, once again, he's missing 151 days. We got to put an end to this. We have to find him. But that's a possibility. Now, the only thing I will say about this possibility is, as you see, there's other homes there. So that's a big risk, even at 3 in the morning, 4 in the morning, to do that. Um, but here's the home. I think I zoom in a little bit more on the next slide. Let me take a look and see. Yes, so, so there's a little bit more, but this is the home. You see there's a house here. This is where I entered. And then I went, I looked in the backyard. There's a barn or shed behind it. I did not see the, I did not go here. And then I don't know what this is. A much larger barn, another home. But it really amazed me when I went to Google to see this. Um, comments people made. I parked my car here and I walked up in comments. I, I didn't even think of this when I was doing it. And this brings about my reason for doing these videos. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm walking on this. I parked my car here. There's no no trespassing signs, so I felt, you know, I wasn't trespassing because there was no there were no signs. And I walked up here, and then when I realized I was going into the home, I went back down to my car to get my GoPro to fix it to my chest so I could have my hands free in case I ran into any kind of trouble. And I'm walking where the tire tracks you can see here. We'll go to the next slide. I'm walking where these tire tracks are, okay? And so it didn't even dawn on me, as they say, why are these tracks here? These, these, This grass is so grown up. The house is so grown up. I'm having comments of this house has been abandoned for 10 years plus, but yet someone's been driving up here. Now, it could be as simple as kids going up to have fun or people going up to, you know, do whatever because... You know, no one's watching this, obviously. Um, but could there be other reasons? Now, back here, you can see these direct lines. This one here is almost directly across the street. But the way is RVs parked, and, you know, you can't control that. They're all at an angle. If you're standing, and you see on my video, I'm standing around right here. And there's an opening here, because there's trees up here. There's an opening and it leads right to that door. Very eerie. Very eerie feeling because essentially, as I say in my video, it looks like if he's looking out his door, he being Chris Proudfoot or she being Katie Proudfoot, they're looking right at this direction. And that, to me, leads me more suspicious, sus, as they say, of this abandoned home. So let's move forward. So here it is in a bigger view. Once again, you see 
I mean, what is what is also eerie here, if you look at this view as you go in, minus a little bit of that RV and a little bit of this cabin, look at the only RV that is in this blow-up of this abandoned home. Sebastian Rogers missing 151 days. 151 days. Keep the awareness alive. That's what it's about. He's what it's about. But look how it's just right there. Creepy. I believe someone made a comment. You know, Katie could even walk across there. She could walk across there, spend time with her son. This is a big area of concern. Okay, moving along. Here, I just wanted to highlight, once again, Sebastian Rogers, missing 151 days, five months. I wanted to highlight here this, where I walked. Uh, walked this entire stretch. I went back into the woods. So much opportunity. It, look here, there's a little, I didn't even realize this. You see me on my video stand. Let's close this down. You see me on my video stand right here behind this auto zone. You can even see right here. There's a little place to park two cars. So if you backed a truck in here, you're right here. And what I did not realize by looking in, I would not go in because it's private property. There's a home right here that more than likely is its property. And with back in February and no leaves, real easy just to walk right in here, bury someone, allegedly in my opinion, or take them here. And it's private property. Who's going to go in there? You've heard me state that before. Okay. Let's move on. Okay, so now we're coming to Hendersonville. So before we get there, let's just back up right here. Oh, here we are. I went too far. My bad. Okay. So that's Horn Lake. So Horn Lake is a big concern for me. I'll break it down like this. 17 hours Chris Proudfoot went missing. That's a huge question. What was he doing during all that time? We know he went back to this area. Right at a month later, Katie joins him and comes over there. The question people are saying is why did she leave her son, the home in Hendersonville? I ask this. Maybe she was going to her son. Maybe she wasn't leaving him because she knows he's not coming home, but she was going to him in Horn Lake, Mississippi. Allegedly, in my opinion. So then from here, I left Horn Lake. I left Mississippi, Memphis, Tennessee, and I started driving east to Hendersonville. Now, I believe if you mark it out on the map, it's 240 miles. That's a simple calculation. If you're doing 80 miles an hour and you're not stopping, three-hour drive. Chris wants us to believe it's three hours and 37 minutes, doorstep to doorstep, trying to be funny. You know, that's what Google, I think the first time I Googled, that's exactly what it told me. And But it can be done three hours. I did it in three hours. In that time, I stopped off at the uh, Jackson, Tennessee, where... Allegedly, Sebastian and Chris were seen getting gas. I did a video from there. And then I made my way over. I stopped maybe at least a half a dozen times. Bathroom breaks, food. I like food, so hey, you know I was going to stop for that. But I didn't rush. I, that wasn't my intention. I, I, I marked the time. Uh, I, I'm aware of how long I stopped. Be it half an hour, 15 minutes, an hour. I think one stop was a good hour, if not more than an hour. So when it was all said and done, it was about a five-hour trip, but I easily lost two hours with stopping. So without trying to do anything, speed or anything, you know, it's a 70-mile drive, uh, so it's going 80 is not a problem. Um, three hours. So you have to ask yourself, no traffic, three in the morning, midnight, four in the morning, between midnight and six in the morning, no traffic, and raising it up to 90, even 100 miles an hour, if you've got a radar detector, and just for whatever reason, Chris Proudfoot seems to me like he would be someone with a radar detector, as well as a CB radio or walkie-talkie to do all these things. But with that radar detector and feeling comfortable, um, 
that it's going to alert you. I mean, a hundred miles an hour is not, not impossible. And that really cuts it down to two, two and a half hours. Where's it? Two and a half hours. I think it's two hours and 20 minutes if you calculate it. So right. hundred miles an hour, two hours is 200. Every half hour is 50 miles an hour. So about two hours and 20 minutes and you're there. So could he come home, grab him and bring him back? Absolutely possible. Okay. Allegedly, in my opinion, let's move on. Okay. So now we're in Hendersonville and one of the major comments I kept seeing mostly about my video through the neighborhood, through the new construction neighborhood with retention pond and through the cemetery, people could not believe how close things were. Um, the first time I went there, oh, here's my cursor, here's the home. I came out and I went down Long Hollow Pot, which is the main road, and I noticed all these different places, but until you start going through them, you don't realize how close the cemetery being the biggest uh, shock for me. <clears throat> Excuse me. So one thing I did here, I drew this line. Allegedly, this is what Katie drove the morning she reported him missing. Okay. She would go by this new neighborhood. She would go by the cemetery. She would go to his high school. She would turn into the high school. And then she would go through the campus to the other way. And I did not know until I did this where it would lead me. But when you come to this stop, there's a sign, which is great. Sebastian Rogers missing 151 days. There's a sign right here, which is great. But when you come to this New Hope Road directly across the street, that is the storage buildings. This Beach Market Convenience Store, a.k.a. Warsham's General Store. This is where that is. This creek here is Drake's Creek. Okay, so let's back up. The um, Sebastian's neighborhood. Next to it, the new home construction. You can see when this Google shop was done, Google Earth, there were no homes there. Here is the retention pond. Directly next to it is the cemetery, Beach Cemetery, a church there. Okay. And then directly next to that, you can even see the football field, several spots through this as you drive through this cemetery the, is his high school. And then directly next to that is Warsham. So some of the comments I saw, they did not realize all of this is together. And just to give you an idea, if you come out of this home and drive down to here, you're right at one mile. So all of this is one mile. If you don't know, one mile is 5,280 feet. So driving it is a mile. Walking, as, as they say, the crow flies through here for whatever your reasons are. Chasing after him, as a theory could be. Him leaving, some people still believe on his own. You could get here quickly. Some of the comments I got were questions of how fast could I get from here to the retention pond. And then from here... To the cemetery and then from here to the football field you know i know a theory has been where katie did whatever she was doing that maybe she took sebastian to memphis and when she came back for whatever her reasons she parked a car here and she made her way on foot back to the home it's not possible it's actually very easy i'm out of shape okay i'm, I'm too heavy i need to get back in shape i eat too much okay i love food who doesn't, right? But I'm telling you right now, if I left on foot and I went all the way here, let's just call it a mile, even with the walking, I'm here in less than 20 minutes. I'm here in less than 20 minutes, easily, probably 15, because I'm cutting through. So you could say each one of these about five minutes, right? And I think I was telling someone, I think I answered a comment that said, look, for me to get from the home to the cemetery is definitely less than 10 minutes or around 10 minutes okay so and uh i know this was been searched it's definitely it's one mile so it's within the five mile range uh but i'm going to say this and i'm going to state allegedly in my opinion one of my theories is he's been moved and i don't i don't hesitate to say possibly multiple times okay I hate to say this because it's morbid, but I think it's like a game to these two, right? 
I just I just have bad feelings about this. That's why I'm involved. I want to find out, and it leads me to the second one. Number one is we're going to find Sebastian. We're going to bring him home, missing 151 days. And then our next step, after we lay him to rest properly and he's at peace, we're going to focus on these two. Yeah, that's right. The interview request still alive. Chris Proudfoot, Katie Proudfoot, sit down with Silvers on the scene. Okay, so here I zoomed in a little bit just to give you more of an idea, and I highlighted some points. So this is the home. Let me start here. Sebastian Rogers missing 151 days. Keep the awareness alive. Maria Gomez Perez. We still don't know. The reports haven't come out, but was she spotted by someone? A state, two states over that only knew that she was missing because of People keeping awareness alive. So keep the awareness alive. Do I hope Sebastian's alive? Absolutely I do. I hope he's playing video games and having a great time with someone who's caring for him. And if he finds his way to a restaurant, a convenience store, a gas station, walking around on the road and someone sees him, they'll know because we because we kept the awareness alive. That's the only way they would know he would be missing. And it will help bring him home alive. Now, allegedly, in my opinion... Unfortunately, I don't think that's the case. It's more recovery than rescue. But the home, next to the home, the new construction, this is all homes are up now, okay? Back in here, they're, this is the phase they're on now. This is the retention pond. As I stood at the retention pond, it may be right here, actually. I think it may be more right here. As I stood at the retention pond, I, I gasped because I knew the cemetery was here. I just did not know it literally property lines. I mean, all of these homes, they have the cemetery in their backyard. I mean, you literally go, if I was guessing 20 feet, 30 feet out the back door and you're right there. So it runs right along there. There, I, I circled this because it shows, you know, boom, you jump this little tarp makeshift fence they have now and you're there in the cemetery. It does have a pond in it. I don't know how deep, but it's right there from here to there, less than 10 minutes. I circled this because I believe this is the area where I was standing on very soft dirt, but it is a cemetery. They're burying bodies, you know, um, on the daily. So there's going to be dirt there, and I'm hopeful that this was searched. I thought as I was driving, and I saw right here how you can see his football field was kind of an eerie feeling for me because I didn't realize it it was that close okay so let's move on to the next what I've done here is I've uh Sebastian Rogers missing 151 days keep the awareness alive bring him home you'll see the church Beach Cumberland Presbyterian the church where the pond cemetery you'll see the view right here this is his high school Okay, my first trip there, they had signs out front. Um, across the street is where the command post was. We'll go back, see if you can see it. Right here is like a voluntary fire and rescue, and this is where the sign is up here still, where the command post was to go out and search back when he went missing five months ago, 151 days ago. The other thing I circled here is the Warshams. Now, once again, have people walked this creek? Probably so. What did I say a few moments ago? I think he's been moved. I'll even go as far as allegedly, in my opinion, saying that once the five-mile radius search was done, he was moved immediately. And then I believe when any pressures or, as they call it, heat, right? Cops to heat is around the corner, he might get moved even more. It sounds morbid. I hope this isn't the case, but I think this is part of the game. So the searching is two things, right? I mean, could he be laying in the woods right here? That makes it look like he just walked out of the home, right? Succumbed to the elements. I say these in my, this is my video. But with all that being said, if you said, Silvers, what is your, Silvers on the scene, what is your number one spot right here? Something about right here in, in the city of Hendersville. That would be number one, okay? And then we'll make our way across. 
and this would be number two. So Sebastian Rogers missed in 151 days. This Texas Roadhouse, and we all know, last seen here. Supposedly there's a video. We haven't seen it. If someone has seen it and has it, email it to me. I haven't seen it. But his biological dad, Seth, has seen it. Supposedly it's enough to say last proof of life, you know, that he was there because the trash, taking the trash out video is not very clear. So we know here around 6.30 on February 25th, that Sunday, reported missing 12 hours later on February 26th. That was 151 days ago. So I did go here. I went here. As soon as I came into Hendersonville, that's the first place I went. I walked around here. There is a drop-off here, ladies and gentlemen. It's got to be at least 20 feet drop. There is a, a fence, like a, um iron fence. What do you call those? Like a, it's not rod iron, but it's like a, metal fence that goes around here so if anyone's out here playing kids or whatever they won't because it's a drop it's a drop off uh, drake's creek same creek that you see here drake's creek runs through the whole town basically this distance is about 5.2 miles from the home so technically it's outside the five mile search radius did they search this from the beginning probably because of his Mary's Magical Place. Now, this is interesting. I'll stop here. Uh, I, I want to be correct in everything I say. You know, it's all my speculation and what I believe, allegedly, in my opinion. But if someone like Seth is watching this, um, I know he searched Memorial Park, I believe it is, which he said was Sebastian's favorite place. Um, but it seems like I've heard Katie say this was Sebastian's favorite place. So maybe both were. Right, go with mom here and go with dad there. So I just want to make that clear. As I walk this, I would talk about uh, Seth, you know, searching it. Terry Lynn searching it, I believe. Others searching it, and with it being like five point two miles, five point four miles, maybe it was searched in the initial searches. But you have to go back to where he was last seen. A lot of people believe he never came home from here. I disagree with that, and I think he did. But when it was time to, you know, hide him, put him somewhere, this is a good place to come. Look at this Drake's Creek, all these woods. There's even patches over here across 386. This is the exit from 386. Okay. Um, and then I circled this. This is one of the dirt mountains. Very tall. It's about three feet tall. And it sits right at the fence. Once again, a fence that goes around here is very similar to the fence that goes around the playground for the kids. And it sits right there. There was another small one here too. Have they been searched? Uh, if not, I'll search them. I'll bring a shovel and I'll, I'll eliminate uh, that as being something. And the other creek, which is very shallow. I didn't, I wasn't prepared to go in it this time but uh this would be my number two spot so let's wrap it up because i don't want to keep rambling on i went to horn lake mississippi and that's where i begin looking the abandoned home is my number one spot latimer park has been brought up it's not far a couple of miles from the uh, rv i've driven through it but i've never looked there but that would be at least top three so one here two or three there there's a couple of other spots uh, I would love to find information here I want to speak to the manager here people have mentioned the manhole right in front of the RV as well as there are cameras right above the door I've even thought about knocking on the door the crazy thought once again one of these crazy theories that Sebastian's alive inside that trailer for whatever reasons, whatever crazy reasons these two are doing. And then how eerie it is right across the street, but this is my number one spot. So I was in Horn Lake, then I made my way across to Sebastian's home where he went missing. And uh, here in uh, Hendersonville. Okay, so I made my way there. And you can see how close everything is and where Something happened on the night of February 25th, early morning hours of February 26th. 
Speaking of that, I'll take this cursor to show right here. So this is when you come into the neighborhood and you turn left here, you come around to the home. Right here is where the flashlight video happens. I've watched that more and more recently. You definitely see the illumination here. I think I'll do a video on it. We do an illumination here and I'll explain that. That light is a direct line shot from the back of Sebastian's home to this. I'm pretty convinced he was taken out at this point, allegedly in my opinion. Then you could actually come down here and go. At the time he went missing, I believe you could drive through here, and I think you can now, as I heard someone say the other day. Uh, a couple of times I've gone, I couldn't get through here. I'd have to come out, and I went in through this way. So I'm in Hendersonville. I drove from the roadhouse over to the home. There are three routes you can take. I took one over. I took a different one back. A lot of opportunity. Those are on my videos you can see. And then, um, you know, these are the highlight spots throughout this area. Once again, Katie allegedly did this drive. I think, in my opinion, as a show of like, uh, you know, whatever. But she knew he was already gone. And uh, the high school, Warsham's Market, this is my number one spot. Mary's magical spot behind Texas her husband number two in Hendersonville. I'll be checking those again. Um, so here that is. So I hope that helps make sense of, <clears throat> excuse me, on the ground where I was looking, what I was showing you for all these eyes to see. Thank you for that support because the more that view, the more that share, the more ideas we can come up with. And it ends here. Look. Check this out. This is all the information you need. These are four photos of him. This photo was allegedly taken on the 24th, Saturday, before reported missing on Monday, before last being seen on Sunday. Still have that optimism. We got to keep it alive. Keep the awareness alive to bring him home. 151 days. All the information you need on him is right here. Different angles, different looks. Look how happy he is, right? Look how happy he is. He does not be to be, need to be missed in 151 days. Here's a phone number, two phone numbers to call. Lieutenant Brandon Clark on the Sumner County Sheriff's Office, 1-800-TBI-FINE. If you see something, please say something. You know, I'll end the video with this. It's easy not to get involved. It's, it's easy not to get involved. But if you're aware of something and you know or you believe you see him somewhere, you have to step up. As a community, a whole nation, world, if we start looking out for one another, that doesn't mean I have to buy you groceries or uh, take care of you every day. No, no, no. I'm just saying when you're out and about, you leave your home and you're out there and you see someone that needs help, Help them. You see a missing child because you've seen this poster, this flyer, and he know he's been gone for 151 days and someone looks like him. Help them. All you have to do is call 911. It's that simple. If you can get a photo, if you can get a video, even better. If you can watch them leave. If you think you see Sebastian in the store and he goes to leave and get in the car, try your best to remember what type of car that is. Take a note on your phone. Take a photo. Call the police. Because we want to bring this boy home. One thing I've never shared, I'm going to share now. I have thought I've seen Sebastian twice. Right? Um, the first time was in Knoxville, Tennessee. My job leads me to go all around Georgia, most half of Alabama, and all of Tennessee. And I was in Knoxville probably six weeks, two months after he had been missing. I thought I saw him at a uh, at a miniature golf. Folks, I'll tell you this right now. It scared the living daylights out of me. I didn't know what to do. Everything I just told you about helping and all that, I was scared. I got as close as I could from where I was adjacent next door to the place, and I said, it's not him. So I went back, doing my business, doing what I was doing, and it just it ate at me. So I got in my car, and I drove over there, pretending like I was getting information, 
at the miniature golf, and I walked right up to the boy. And he turned and he looked at me, and when he did, the smile, the look was completely different. And this calm came all over me, this peace came all over me of, um, okay, two things. Wasn't him, and I've checked it out. Because had I gone on and not checked it out and heard that he was possibly seen in Knoxville, I would immediately thought that was him. Second time I was in a Cracker Barrel. I can't remember, honestly. I think maybe I was in Georgia somewhere. And uh, I was with Silvers too. Of course, we were eating. We loved to eat. And uh, I was looking at my food, probably eating. And I hear her say, look at that kid. He's got glasses on. Is that, is that Sebastian? And I was so happy she did that. And I looked up, and all I could see was the, the kid walking out from the eating area into the little store. And and I, I, I'm a little bit trained on it a little better now because I'd seen this possibility in Knoxville. So I jumped up from my seat. I went straight, started looking for him, and I got you know got right up on him. And, uh, and he looked at me again. You know, when you get close to somebody, they'll typically look at you and... As soon as he looked at me, no, the glasses were the only thing. He looked nothing like him, and so um, just do that. Just just be 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 kind to people. Don't start any problems or any trouble. Just you know, as you're walking around a a public place, if you think you see something, get as close as you can. Uh, and if you think it's him, if you feel strongly enough that it is, nine one one, and have those people or one eight hundred TBI fine. Call somebody. So it's a simple thing of, <clears throat> excuse me, if you see something, say something, do something. Because together, with all eyes looking, we will find Sebastian and we will bring him home. And then we will deal with those two. Thank you again. Let me go back here. I just got to tell you this. Thank you again, everyone. Thank you for Clutch Them Pearls, Justin. I appreciate you giving me credit, sending folks to my channel. Here is my email address. If you have a tip, a comment, something you want to tell me in private. Thank you all for your support. And with all that, Let's don't forget it's about Sebastian and let's bring him home. Thank you all. It's Friday. Have a fantastic weekend. Be safe. Have fun. Be at peace. And as always, make your day fantastic. Thank you very much. Peace, everyone.